What's the crack, lads? Welcome back to the podcast. Wes, this is going to be a big one. This is going to be a big, big podcast because, look, we're going to have eFootball a little bit in the background today. We are going to be talking about the eFootball Championship Pro. And obviously, me and you did it. A dream come true, right? Without getting too too emotional on the podcast now. This is going to be <laughs> this is going to be a bit of a special one for us because yeah, I mean, look, it's been a while since we did the podcast, but obviously a lot of people have been asking us about our thoughts on it and, you know, how it was doing it together and stuff. I mean, it's still surreal to me. I said it's probably not going to hit me until like halfway during this podcast that me and you actually did like a live broadcast together and we didn't, you know, burn down the studio or anything like that. Um, but yeah, firstly, welcome, man. It is Bank Holiday Monday. So welcome in. Hope you've had a good weekend. And uh, yeah, let's get cracking with this because there's a lot to discuss, man. Well, I did threaten. I did threaten that, that this podcast would just descend into us both potentially just giggling <laughs> for an hour because, uh, you know, peeking behind the curtain or, or you know piercing the fourth wall. There's been a lot of voice messages between myself and Barry throughout this entire week, and a lot of it is just very much hype. After the fact, <laughs> before the fact, there was, you know, a uh, couple of weeks ago when I read or when I was informed that we we were short of a host because I think Semra was covering La Liga, uh, but like my brain immediately went. Well, we gotta save that. We'll get a host. We'll get. We've got Harry. Harry can host. I'll I'll move up to main comms. I'm sure I've got a guy uh, who can do punditry. Uh, and I, I remember I was literally. I think I was outside the studio. I was outside the studio on the Saturday evening after the after it had finished, and I had sent you a WhatsApp already. Going, is there any chance you're free? <laughs> uh, and literally, you you came straight back, and then I managed to connect you and 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 Jordy. Or two uh, 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 on Sunday, and, and then we were off to the races. And then I think once it got fully confirmed that you were able to to come, I think it was just between ourselves. It was just we we well for one, it was the first time we'd ever physically met one another. But two, to put ourselves into that scenario of live broadcast, yeah, man, was insane. It was just <laughs> it's. I don't I don't think it's been done before. I don't think it we do done again. I don't think you could have such a special environment than what we had on that day. It yeah. was absolutely insane. It was crazy, man. I mean, when you text me, like, I was like, my first, my, I think my first message back to you was like, I think it was just like one word, which I won't repeat because it was like <laughs> PG-13 stream. But it was like, oh man, like I was like, I have to, I, number one, I was like, I'm going to get off work no matter what. Like, I was like, I, I like, it's not a question whether I'm going to do it or not. Um, and then it was like, it just, I think it, it kind of happened so fast that like, as I said, like I genuinely, it still hasn't like properly hit me yet as like, you know, it happened so fast. Like we, you know, connected with the, with the guys and then it was like, are you put me in contact with the lads? And then they were like, yeah, can you do it? And then it was like, I think it was like Monday that I actually got like full confirmation that I was like, yeah, look, this is good. We're going to like book your flights. And then it was like Monday evening. I was like, like I'm actually going in you four like, days time. Happening. Yeah. Like yeah, it wasn't, it happening. wasn't even a thing where I was like, I had a, you know, I had a, like a thought process of like, Oh, will I do it? Or I was like, no, I'm going doing it. Even if I have to swim over there, like I was going <laughs> to do it. Um, and like, even just to do it with you and Harry, like, you know, especially, you know, me and you do the podcast all the time. We obviously have banter and we obviously, you know, like get on really well as friends, but like, we'd never actually met face to face. So yeah. I was like, no, nah, there's never going to be a better opportunity to just like go into the deep end and um you know and like just go for it but like yeah it was it was crazy man like the like the last time i did one was in the euros and that was you were doing it remotely obviously with harry and i was in yeah, me, with me alex and harry with, me and harry with the floating heads yeah the, the floating heads screens, yeah. but that was like a completely different scenario because this was like obviously no covid restrictions there was nothing like all the players oh. like the biggest thing for me was the players in the room and like you hear them shouting and roaring and you're like oh i don't want to like you know like <laughs> I don't want to like say something like where it's like, oh, he should have scored that. You know, he's useless or anything like that. Um, because obviously they could hear you. You to keep a professional <laughs> and all that. But uh, yeah, it was like, I mean, I don't think I don't think it hit me until I was like flying home. I was like, did that did that just happen yeah. that we actually commentated on a, you know, and like, yeah, look, I, I made a couple of mistakes. I, I think we got off to a really good start with the event when I called Harry Alex. Um, yeah, that, that was, was probably that the was biggest. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> we were just sat there we were stood there or i was sat there harry was like to the right of me and i just kind of looked over him and be like that um, <laughs> and then you went sorry i mean harry <laughs> yeah in my and defense i was practicing like 
from kind of a script that I had done with the e Euros with Alex. With yeah, Alex yeah, was yeah. like my, you know, yeah. like co-analyst, and I was like bringing Alex into the conversation. And then whatever like happened in the interview, I kind of like you it was like weird. Blur. It was a blur. Yeah. It, 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 to kind of to kind of put it also in, in more context, we both landed there Friday afternoon mm. or Friday evening. We met up with Harry. Mm. You had done a load of prep work already. Then you had my prep work on top of that, mm. and you could. It was, it was like an excitement of. Ner- it was like nervous excitement. You yeah, had. like you were absolutely pumped to do it, but you could tell you were also slightly terrified because you were yeah. like, "This is a live." Slightly, thing. man. I and was absolutely like, so nervous. You were like, you were like, ah, it's ready to go. I'm like, I'm like, it was almost like you're watching like the greyhounds at like the, the, the races. <laughs> like they're in the traps. They're ready to go. They've seen a rabbit go past, and they're like ready to chase <laughs> after it. And then it was like I think I think the thing that kind of offset you a little bit was was what happened with rehearsal, which was one of the cameras broke. Yeah. So rather than you having like a full full bodied rehearsal, it was a little bit disjointed where you were off and ready, and then they were ready to start cutting through to other bits of the rehearsal, and then the camera breaks, and they're like, okay, well we're abandoning rehearsal now. And I looked at you, and you were like, oh man, I'm just I'm just so nervous. Like if this does, like something breaks, like what's gonna happen? Like what we gonna do? <laughs> And, but you were also but like at the same time you're like once I've got the first interview out of the way yeah you're like I'll, I'll be okay yeah and I'm kind of glad that that first interview didn't go great for you in the sense of it sharpened you up and it brought you back into the room a bit yeah definitely because you were so like ready to go once you'd made those first couple of errors because there was only two or three there was the Origi and Lukaku which you did oh, brilliantly yeah. <laughs> which you did brilliantly that was just a slip of the did, tongue but you did brilliantly because it was like you even made your own joke of like, do you know what? He's made a fool of me, but you know, I'm, I missed that. I missed who he was, but he's not, you know, he's made sure of it now when he scored. <laughs> and you, but you incorporated those mistakes. It could be very easy for you to kind of almost gone, well, I've made a mistake one, mistake two, mistake three. Yeah. And then go four, five, six, seven, eight. And then he just kind of fumble. Instead, yeah. actually, you brought yourself back into the room. And we had a blast doing oh, it. Oh man, like, it was... we had, we had, we had, um, we had some really good games. We had Barca versus Monaco to start us off. We had uh, you had uh, United versus Inter. You had all of these things that were happening around you, and you were like, and you once you got up and running, you were just you were all away. Like, yeah. And, and again, I, as I kind of said to you, and not to toot my own horn, ladies and gentlemen, but I said to Barry, you know, don't worry, you are with professionals. You've got, me, you've got <laughs> Harry. You've got a whole boat. You know, obviously, it was the first time you'd met the guys from Adrenaline. Who were yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the they were class, man. Crew. It was the first time you'd engage with them or first time you'd interact with them. So from a trust perspective, you were like, I'm not sure whether I, I... You know, you're probably like, oh, do I, am I able to? Like, what do I do? <laughs> and actually, they were brilliant because they gave you everything you need. Um, shout out to Billy. I absolutely think he's the GOAT. Like, he's the as, GOAT, as, man. as an admin out there, he's an unreal person. But he was like the first guy on the scene that you see. He was like... If you need anything, just let us know. Water, like, whatever you need, just <laughs> let us know. Like we've got you. Like, and they put you at such an ease. Yeah, they did. No, but and you like and you Harry said, did as well. I think. Like, I think the biggest thing for me was I was actually like I I wasn't really worried about like talking like because I knew after a while like you said to me after about five minutes you forget the cameras are there and you do kind of forget yeah. the cameras are there. But the biggest thing that threw me was in that first interview. Um, when I went over to interview and cams came towards me, I started talking to cams. So I missed the cue from looking at Harry. And like, it wasn't Harry's fault. It was mine where I was like waiting for Harry to stop talking. And I just remember cams and me having a little chat. And I was like, you know, how would you get on? You, you go to whatever. I'm going to ask you this question or just give him a little, you know, run through. Cause it's my first time interviewing. And by the time time you'd looked over. Yeah. Harry had stopped talking. So I was like, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, well, yeah, we're here. Yeah. Whoa. And, then, and then it was me at like, the side of the desk going like, oh, <laughs> Yeah, but it was fine after that. And then I just remember yeah, yeah. walking back under the, like I walking back towards the desk, like the analyst desk beside you. And like, you know, Billy was like, good job, good job. You're, you're going yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. You come back in now. And it's like telling me when to go back into the camera shot. Yeah, yeah. But um, no, but I mean, you, like I've said this before, like you and Harry, like, you're obviously the standard, do you know what I mean? And I wish, I wish anyone that has like that does content or anyone that's like watching the the podcast and does content themselves or likes that kind of like world, I suppose, could get a could get an opportunity to do it. Like I obviously feel very blessed, you know, to have done E3. Like nothing prepares you for it. Like it just it's oh. it's it's a hard, it's very hard to explain 
the buzz and the pressure that you get off it. But then at yeah. the same time, you're kind of thinking to yourself, you want it to be professional, but you don't want it to be like that if somebody's watching me on a live broadcast, they did, that I'm unrecognizable, that like I don't yeah, have a couple yeah, of my yeah. sayings or I don't, don't speak the way I speak. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So because at the end of the day, it is a video game. Do you know what I mean? Like it's yeah, not like we're on a debate in politics or like world peace or anything like that. You have to have a bit of fun with it. But no, definitely like I, I personally, I've said this to you before, like, like I know you're like confident in your ability to do things, but like, I still don't think you realize how good you are at the flow of things. Cause people, people think like I could do that and like I could do this and it's like, sure. They're only talking about what they're seeing on the pitch, but it's like, you know, it's something we kind of have spoken about even in the euros. Like it's about like the connective tissue of like match to match. And it's like bringing something up 45 minutes ago accurately that ties in to not just to talk, not just to talk shite, but to be actually, well, if you remember, like, in that first game, he had that chance with the manual save. We're seeing the manual yeah, saves yeah, yeah. again. Do you know, and it's just a connective tissue to make to make the broadcast. But, no, it was, it was, it was, I mean, from the minute we landed, man, and just, like, landing, and, like, we met spoils. Alex, and then going to meeting the players, like, spoils. meeting Rox and the players, and then Dominator in, in uh, yeah. when we were getting a bit of grub in Burger King, and they just, like, come up, and they're introducing themselves, or you're introducing yourself. Like, everyone was super sound, like, and... You know, it's just a good bunch of lads like that you couldn't help but feel even though I was bricking it like I was absolutely bricking it like once I got into the flow of it I wish everyone could have that buzz of it because it is some buzz like when you've lads yeah, roaring is. in your ear and Abs- me and you are absolutely. vibing and, yeah it's class man it's absolutely it's, a, it's like I, I I I likened it to because I've seen people who have if, straight, who, I can't say strangely because my commentary style doing play by play is not to everybody's taste they might not necessarily like somebody going absolutely mental when it comes to the <laughs> and, and that's fine. Yeah. That's absolutely fine. I, you know, it's 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 totally fine if that if that's not your bag. That's that's cool. That, but like for me, that's how I look at it. I look at it as you bring excitement, you bring hype when there is hype. You can't be, you know, it can't be a library and it can't be. There's no hype. Yeah, like mean, everything's crazy. Like, everything's brilliant. Like, like yeah. yeah, it can't, it can't be, it can't be all hype, and it can't all be a library. You have to have almost like that roller coaster of like the low points in the game where you can kind of be a bit like, okay, but you can see he's trying to feel his way in here, and what's he gonna do, blah blah blah, blah. and then you can kind of work up to a crescendo and then go from there. Mm. Like, you know, for me, like I think the appreciation you probably got from it was, was as you said, it wasn't. It's not as easy as I make out, and no. it's not as easy as Harry makes out. No way. But the be- the beauty of it is, is that the more people, as you said, the more people that try to peek behind the curtain and see behind the scenes as to how difficult it can be, the more recognition you'll probably see. Because you know, you know, when Harry and myself, we're we're you know we're kind of well versed in it now. Mm. We've commentated with each other for probably about on and off for about three or four years we have that established kind of relationship where I know what his cues are. He knows what mine are. The beauty of it with you came in was, is that we do this podcast. We know each other's cues. We know each other's personalities. We know what we can do to bounce off one another. And you did perfectly in bouncing points back to me. So it wasn't just a case of, I brought up a point, got your opinion. It yeah. was, I brought up a point, got your opinion. You then drop point B back into me. And then I was able to go, okay, yeah, I can recycle that into other conversations. Yeah. And that was the bit, but that's, that's the, the art of it that I think that people don't really see. They just see, oh, well, they're just shouting about a video game. Yeah. But there is so much more nuances to what we do. And, 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 and that might sound self grandizing, but it, 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 there is so much more to it than just here's video game. You shout about video game and that's it. There's so much more to it because, like you said, you have to be able to call back on stuff. You have to be able to look back at previous match days and what's the lost streak they're on, what's the win streak they're on, have they lost yet, or have they conceded, or all of these other things. You have to incorporate all of that into one bundle in event in essentially what is a what ten to fifteen minute game of mm. e football. Yeah. Because don't forget, all of these games, these players only have one game per match yeah. day. Yeah. So you have to get into that twenty minute period. You have to fill everybody in on what's happened the last five match days, what's happened this match day so far, what's going to happen in future match days, who they've got, all of these other facets. It's so many different things. Um, and I'm just glad that you kind of got to see a little bit of it because it's yeah. like, actually now you can kind of see the the other side of it. Yeah, it was cla- Yeah, but that's the thing, man. I don't think I don't think it's like. I think anyone watching this podcast, look, there'll be some people that won't have an interest in the pro scene and yeah, won't have an interest enough. in our experience of it, right? They just want to like, what do you think about the game? What do you think about the packs, right? 
But I do think that as well, that for anyone that is watching this or is interested in a discussion about it, like, I, I think, you know, for me, when I used to talk to you about your experiences of it, I would have an interest in this type of thing. You know, like I did something similar in college when I was doing, you know, media stu- media studies and, you know, English and media or whatever. So like I always, and like what I do in work is dealing with people a lot. Like in my real life job, it's dealing with people a lot, you know, meeting, scheduling or whatever. So it's cool to see that done at like a professional level with an event that's live, that like yeah. is there forever. Like if you make yeah. a mistake, like my mistakes are there forever the good points I did are there forever. Yeah, me and you can look back on this in 20 years time and be like, you know, look yeah, at me this. and Wes did this together. You know, Harry is there as well. Um, you know, and it's like, it's just, it's just cool. I do, I do think that people like uh, that are actually interested in this ty- kind of topic, they're interested in the journey of it and like what it's like to actually do it because it's kind of like, I, I kind of liken it to kind of like driving a car, man. It's like, you can read about how to drive a car and know an engine inside out and know everything about everything. But until you actually get behind the wheel, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if a car is going to swerve. You don't know if you're going to like, you know, miss a gear change. You're going to run out of petrol, whatever, right? It's very, very difficult to um, to explain it because it's like when the light goes on, it's like fight or flight. It's like you either you talk or else you just like, yeah, you yeah. just freeze. Like, do you know what I mean? I, and I, it's just weird, like. Yeah, I mean, if you talk about journeys of where of where we've been, uh, and we can we can certainly talk about this because obviously my my little social media post was, was you know, I, I, I really <laughs> don't I bring really up that tweet I'm, again, no, that midnight kid tweet. I really don't really <laughs> and found out that found that DM because I was like, how long has it been that we've known each other? How long has it been that we haven't haven't physically seen one another? And then I was like, and then to think about how things started to where we are right now, we've gone from, hey, we're going to bring you on as an event organizing for <laughs> Pez Universe to now the kind of the the not I wouldn't even say the end point because you know there's still there's still stuff to be written there's still stuff yeah to be definitely done. man and now we're in that zone where we've gone from where we were in the community to where we are now it's like we've been what seven years mm. deep like yeah we've been through Pez's 2016 to 2021 like we've now on to eFootball we've seen a lot like we have seen a lot, we've been through a lot, we've had a lot of experiences, and it just goes to show that the hard work you put in, you know, a couple of years back actually pays off in the yeah. end. You know, yeah. you know, it wasn't that long ago where you were going off to E three. It has it wasn't that long ago when I was competing within within Pez. Like it's it's not that long ago. And but it just goes to show that if you continue to put the work and you continue to put that time in, yes you have to have some element of luck. Yeah, you definitely. Know, had, had he dominated and not signed for Celtic all those years ago, nobody would ever have seen me on eFootball Pro. Mm. Like, that, like it's the, one of those sliding door moments, you know, and it just goes to show that, that it's those moments that matter. And you have to make them count. You yeah. Know, yes, there's a degree of networking. Yes, there is a degree of, uh, uh, of working and collaborating together. But the more you work and collaborate together, the more likely you are to get these types of opportunities. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I, I know you've something me and you've spoken about before and it's it's something we kind of do once a year where we do like a mental health kind of podcast. I know because it's very, yes. very important to you, but like we will we will revisit that. But just to touch on it on like a little part of that to kind of like seep into the conversation, like there is a little bit of an imposter syndrome there that if you if you like if you just think about it on yourself by yourself, right, you kind of forget the journey you've made. Like I've been involved in the Pez community when it was like back in Pez 6. Like Pez 6 is like ancient history now, right? Where I was involved with communities on forums, you know, Pez Gaming, Pez Fan, all of these, you know, uh, places, Evil Web, wherever, where you'd be, you know, an anonymous person just doing edits and getting involved with people and projects. And it wasn't until we kind of started Pez Uni that like, I suppose you kind of think like the journey you've gone on so to speak right because i still consider myself as like just you know somebody that does pez content like it doesn't really matter like my like what i've done or gone to e3 or done this event but you do get a bit of that like imposter syndrome where it's like you're still the same person that you are but just as time has gone on you know you might get a bigger following you might get more and more people watching your live streams or youtube videos you might get known by more people in the community which is just from putting into work i suppose but there is that sense of jesus like what am i doing here like this is this yeah, is yeah, mad yeah, yeah. like somebody else should be doing this or somebody else should yeah. be doing that and that's why i do agree with you that like 
you do have to kind of sit back sometimes and actually think to yourself, well, like if I get the opportunity, like let's grab it with both hands and actually do it yeah. and make it an enjoyable experience because even the nerves and the build up, the flight over, like I didn't switch off, genuinely did not switch off. Like I got, when we landed on Friday, I'd say I didn't get, I'd say I got about three hours sleep Friday night, if yeah. even. And the Saturday night, we, me and Harry were flying home at, we had to be in the airport at six in the morning, Sunday yeah. morning. And I didn't sleep. I'd say I got about two hours sleep. Like I'd yeah. say I got about four hours sleep in two nights. Like, cause I was just, the adrenaline was pumping. I was so hyped and I didn't come down until I was actually home, home in my own yeah. bed. I didn't come down and decompress. I'm still not fully decompressed about it. Um, but I do it's think you do get a bit of that. Yeah, you do get a bit of that, like, not imposter syndrome, but it's kind of like, you know, like, can I do this? Like, am I yeah. able to talk yeah. for six hours? And, you know, you're worrying about getting, like, you know, little things wrong. And then it's like, it is it is kind of hard to do it. Like, it can impact you a little bit where you're like, you let the fear kind of like, you know, like overwhelm you a bit. Yeah, um, it, becomes, it becomes like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Because yeah. you'll be sitting there going, I'm going to make a mistake. And then, <laughs> yeah. you go, and then you make a mistake, you go, oh, okay, well, I've made a mistake, which means I'm going to make another mistake. And then that's what I mean. It, it, you can potentially roll on. The, the, the kind of the, you know, to, to steal the line from Ted Lasso, <laughs> in times like this, you have to be a goldfish. You have to just let it just completely go. That, yeah. Yeah, you're right. You made an error. Yeah, fine. Call somebody the wrong name. Fine. Move on. Yeah. Next on. It, yeah. It's fine. Because if you go think about it as well, from a from a a, 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 a tiredness or an energy level, as you realised quite quickly, it was six hours potentially near enough six hours of a broadcast with very little breaks. Yeah. So you yeah. have to throw that in. Where as much people will sit there and go, oh, do you know what? I oh, it must be you know it must be really easy to sit there. It's like actually, <laughs> do you know what? It is incredibly tired when you've got yeah. studio lights on you when you are getting up and down at your chair to go and do interviews when you're doing all of these different things it's like you have to again you have to kind of mentally prepare yourself which yeah. is why you may have noticed you whilst you know before we went live or before, once we've done rehearsal once we've done makeup i would go i went off and did my yeah you went off your own thing I, yeah the way i do it is is that i just kind of go if i can kind of disassociate the moment of going live where i can you know i was sat there speaking to representatives from all different types of clubs speaking that's speaking to people who were you know part of their esports and, and whatnot and if i can if i can disassociate it then it makes it a lot less uh a lot less you know ran does it yeah yeah and yeah you, and you kind of take the sting out of it yeah whereas obviously for you you were like i'm just ready to go like, yeah you were, you were busy <laughs> you were literally busy like if i could prescribe it like it was literally like somebody had stuck a mentos in a coca-cola <laughs> and just left you there because you were so ready to go yeah but then once it had all done, all that energy came out of you at the end because it was like, you know, once once it goes dead, and, or once the, the stream goes dead and then, you know, Harry, you know, we're getting fist bumps from Harry, fist bumps from you, and, like, and you know, Geordie comes over, you know, gives us all a big handshake and everything else. Once that all happens, and obviously, you you know, obviously players have obviously spoken to us as well in terms yeah. of outside. We got spoken to Alex and, you know, Alex may mention about how every time I react about a goal, it sounds like I've, I'm playing. I'm like, yeah, it's like it's like watching your family members go at it. It's like because I used to play against these people and I followed that journey of so many of them for so long. It's like watching your uncle take on your brother. Like, like watching, <laughs> and, watch, and watching your little brother like shoe seven past them, you know, as skills you did. But it, it, it just goes to show that, that there's there's so much more to it than just Wes and, uh, Wes and Barry have done an event. It's like the history books show that, but the reality is yeah. so much different. Yeah, it was a long journey to it. And I think that like even even when you talk about that sort of sort of stuff, Wes, like there was a lot of storylines like up to it then as well, where you're talking about like not just the players have storylines between them that you're kind of like talking about, but also like me and you have that storyline then as well, where like, you know, we started this podcast and it's like grown and grown and grown where people like you know people enjoy watching the podcast and they enjoy talking about eFootball obviously regardless of what the gameplay is like at the moment some people will just watch it just to watch a bit of content on eFootball but then me and you have our friendship then as well that like we'll always have this yeah. to kind of go towards and like you know I met Alex over in Poland the first time ever meeting him and like you know like I consider him a good friend now where we're always chatting like you have that connective thing there where it's like you know it's like it's like being part of a team probably like when yeah. you're you know when you play sport when you're a bit younger like 
you might you might have different personalities in the guys you're on it but when you actually go through something with them or you win or you lose a final or something you have always got that to kind of like draw back on that you went through it like you you did the training you know you got your win or you got your loss or whatever so i think it is like that on a like more like kind of like behind the scenes type level where it's like nobody really sees the research that you're doing like I was, I was afraid that one of the lads that I didn't feel wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't, would have a, like a, a Jamie Carragher moment where he wouldn't understand what I was saying. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it was Leo, wasn't it? He couldn't understand what he was saying in the, in the interview. And he's like, I was afraid of somebody like, Oh, you know, could you repeat that or whatever? So I yeah, kind of yeah. made it my point to, before the interviews, talk to the lads and be like, look, I'm going to ask you this, going to touch on this. You say whatever yeah. you want to say. Um, and like by the second or third interview, like I was starting to have a bit of crack with the lads, like, you know, yeah, with Jose yeah. and, and a few of the boys kills that would you, usually, kills you, you, yeah, you just yeah. love to attack. <laughs> yeah. Kills it was like, you know, I was like, just, just hyping him up to the max. Like, but like it was, you do, you do start to enjoy it once you get into the flow of things, but it's yeah. like up until that point, like it's weeks of research. It's like weeks of learning stats. Um, yeah, I mean, it's like preparing for a presentation or something, except yeah. you're doing the presentation it's, in front of, like, YouTube and it's there forever. Do you know, that's yeah. kind of what it's like. Yeah, for me, the pressure comes from, uh, uh, again, because, you know, you talk about imposter syndrome. To, like, to this day, I'm still looking at it going, yeah, I, I was all right as a player, but do I really, really, do I have the, the, you know, do I have the authority to talk about the game on such a level? Like, that, like you know, the reality of it is, is that actually, yeah, I kind of do. I do yeah, have that you do, definitely, because, man. I mean, like, so, you know, but there is that part of you, like you said, where you kind of go through from, at least from a mental health perspective, where you go, oh, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm meant to be here. Yeah. Uh, uh, but it, but the, the validation comes from, uh, you know, the the players, the coaches, the, the people who are managing the, the teams, you've really got the production staff, you know, I, I take a great load of feedback and a great load of kind of kudos, I would say, or uh, from Semra. Because Semra is somebody who works at La Liga TV. She yeah. works for Real Madrid. She does stuff on ITV. She does stuff on Sky Sports. Like, for me, if she's turning around to me going, you do a really good job, I'm like, that's like, yeah, see so yeah, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. I'll, I'll, you know, if I've got somebody who's, you know, literally covering the Champions League going, yeah, you actually sound like a real <laughs> like, Yeah, that's, yeah, it. that's good that's enough phrase. I'll, I'll, I'll put that on the book, like. You yeah. Know, I'll put that on the book but I think it's normal, man, like, because... Like, I remember the girlfriend saying to me before I did it, she was like, she knew I was kind of nervous, like, and she was like, you know, she's like, you know, you, you've done E3 and you've done Poland and you've done the Euros and you've done, you know, like Gamescom and all this. And it's like, yeah, but it's, I think it's normal, like, to still feel that little nervous energy in your stomach. Yeah. Like, it's not like a crippling, like, nervousness where you're like, you know, like, you literally are, like, so nervous that you're afraid you won't be able to do it. It's more about the nervous energy of, like, you know, like, do I deserve to be on this platform speaking about the game? Like, you know, especially especially for somebody like me, right? I know the game inside out. Like, I know the players inside out, as in the, the cards and stuff like that on yeah, the pitch. Yeah, yeah. But I would never claim to be on the level of the pro guys. You know what I mean? Or even you. Like, I wouldn't have claimed to ever be... I would literally have to turn into a pool of sweat to play the game <laughs> at a regular... Now, can I get to Division 1 anytime I set my mind to it in football Dream Team? Yeah, I can. Like, that's not... What I'm talking about is that upper, you know, top 100, top yeah, 500 yeah, yeah. players in the world where, you know, they're playing 25 hours a week and they're playing it almost at a mechanical level where they know animations, they know when another animation kicks in to auto cancel, to super cancel. Like there's a completely different school of thought that these guys are operating on that is class to see that it's like, you know, it's not just like, oh, everyone's playing 4 3 3, everyone's playing through the middle. Like that's not what's really going on at that level. It's more mechanical that they're playing the game to win do you know that kind of way they're not playing yeah, the game yeah, yeah. to like the skill level is so high that like i would never ever like claim to compete at that i would be yeah, an yeah. average at best player but then in terms of my knowledge of the game and i suppose it's kind of like a, it's kind of, the way i describe it is like you have zidane and you have ancelotti who are managers of football teams right that were top class yeah, players yeah. but then you also you know and pep guardiola but then you also have managers that were you know, maybe average footballers like Mourinho that are top class managers because they yeah, know yeah, the yeah. game from a different analytical mindset. And I feel like I'd be like that with Pez. I'd be like, well, if you could take my knowledge and put it into the re reflexes of Alex Aguasil <laughs> or Kilzu <laughs> or Nexa yeah. or, you know yeah. what I mean? That would be a different kettle of fish. If but if these guys have boats. Yeah. 
yeah, these it's guys have boats. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Naturally, they just are able to see the game at a higher plane. And that comes for every video game, I think. Um, you know, it's not just about time spent. It's about, like, what clicks. And you'll know yeah. that as well, because you've obviously represented the UK before, that there's fine margins between me and you going out playing the same formation, the same style. There's fine margins as to why you're winning and I'm not, or why oh, I'm yeah, winning yeah, and you're not. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. So, absolutely. And I think that, you know, it's... You know, when I see the conversation about meta gameplay and, and things like that on, on socials and, and in Twitch chats and, and, and everywhere else, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll take the 4 3 3 is a, is a go to formation, but just because you set out with the 4 3 3 does not mean you win the game. Yeah, it's, it's what you do with that formation. Yeah, it's the same way when we, we were talking about the, the, the cards. You know, for example, we saw big time cards up close. You know, some teams were using it and some teams weren't. You know, excuse me. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. No, You're no, good, saved it. Good. Saved it. I'm all good. I'm all good. <laughs> I'm all good. But um, but you saw the big times up. You saw the big times up close. You saw how good they were. Ben Yedder for Monaco, Rashford for Matt yeah, Rashford. You know, right, yeah. the, like anybody who's looking at that card and going, oh, it's not a good card to have. Just get your eyes checked and get your brain tested because that is just he was unreal for them. Yeah. But in their hands, as as we kind of looked at it, it's. Having those weapons in the hands of those kinds of players, it is terrifying to yeah. watch because yeah. I'd look at it and go, if I came up against any one of you guys online, I'm quitting out immediately. <laughs> yeah. I think I think the way I said to stop Rocks who's dicey just destroy you know, destroys control. Like, yeah, break the controller. Because that's it, because that's the only way you can stop people like that, because they are like you said, they are so kind of mechanically brilliant at the game because yeah. they've learned the mechanics, they understand it and they then employ it on the game. So but yeah, I think, you know, in terms of the broadcast as a whole, I think Harry did an absolutely outstanding job. Yeah, he was job. unreal, man. First he, time, was so first he was so chill, man. He was so chill, like, put me first at ease. Time, first time he's ever hosted a, a, a show, uh, so big props to him. Yeah. He's, he's lovely blazer. Uh, <laughs> but he was, you know, he was he was outstanding. Uh, and, and as I said to you, you know, in terms of how we worked and how we clicked as a duo, yeah, it's perfect. It was yeah, like, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't anything out of the ordinary. There was no, oh, you know, if I'd have looked at it and go, ah, oh, Barry, Barry looks like a fish out of water here. It's like, no, 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 that wasn't the case. And and I'm sure you've had a load of different messages from people saying about how good of a job you did. And, you know, I, I wholly endorse that as well because I think you did a, a stand-up job. So, man. Yeah, well, it was, as I said to you, like, it wasn't, I'm not going to say it was easy, but it was like, I couldn't have got a better opportunity to do it than, like, with you and Harry. Do you know what I mean? Like, like that's what I, I keep saying is that like I don't think you realize how good you are at doing it I think you just take you just take it for granted it's like putting one foot in front of the other where it's like you know I've talked to people I think I think I got more feedback from the people that didn't message me and say I did a shit job than somebody <laughs> that said you know because because that's just the way it goes man it's like when yeah, you know like people people are kind of you know like my inner kind of crew and a couple that are just outside would have you know messaged me and you know screenshots like i think when i i had my phone off like on flight mode or whatever i turned it on i think i'd like 150 whatsapps and i was mostly just screenshots of me like multiple screenshots of me on the last broadcast up, last, last yeah last had about 10 <laughs> carrasco had about 20 <laughs> shales alistair the girlfriend a couple of my real life friends there was like the, you know it was it was it was kind of cool just to see that but then at the same time i think it's you're always judged by people that you know i think you're always judged by that anonymous person on youtube that will come in and say like oh you were terrible or you know i couldn't understand your accent or you made this yeah. this 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 mistake and in fairness i've had very like i had a few like on my live stream the other day somebody was you know mentioned the thing about uh lukaku and origi and i was just like yeah i said like you know i both said be, like both Bel- i'm yeah. not being funny i'm not being funny they're both belgian forwards who yeah. both play for for one or the other yeah it's yeah. quite it, 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 <laughs> it, it, it's an, it'd be given but that's the that's the intangible it's given given the pressure that you're under yeah that's the diff that was the difference yeah it was it, 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 it's that intangible that's what caused you to make the error it wasn't yeah. that you know who the car yeah yeah it's, it's just a slip of the tongue isn't it your just brain the switches off for a second like. but that's the thing i think that's the biggest kind of and like obviously then as well like i like the same with you like kind of you know because i obviously you've trailed this pack like of doing this kind of d football championship pro so like i was kind of following your lead and a lot of the stuff because i have a natural interest in it and i always like to improve like if i'm going down to get a glass of water i'm nearly trying to improve like my technique of getting the glass of water like i'm just that type of person i'm a perfectionist 
and you'd you'd be like that as well that you're like well look if i did something that you didn't like or if i was talking too much or too little or i was saying you know this or that that it wasn't just tell me like give me some constructive feedback because i can yeah, yeah. it's not going to cripple me it's not going to like yeah, destroy me do you know what i mean it. That's it. it like, if, if there are people who dislike the way that I, I do things, let me know. Like, that's that's the easiest way to, you know, improve. The, the whole, like, silencing people because you don't quite agree with what they're saying. Yeah. Doesn't really work out for anybody because you don't learn anything at that point. I'd rather have people turn around to me and go, you did this wrong. You didn't like, I didn't yeah. like this. You could, or you could improve this. You did all this stuff well, but here's the stuff you could improve on. I'd much prefer that than people just sitting there going, yeah, where's your the goat? Yeah. yeah. Like, it's like, do you know what? You will learn so much more by listening to the people who don't necessarily like the way you do things. So yeah. I kind of what I was saying earlier is that, you know, when I started going, it's my shit. <laughs> Some people don't like it. Yeah, Some yeah, prefer, yeah. Like, but that's oh, okay as well because you have your your you 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 are who you are. Like you're not going to change yeah. your style. It's just you can adapt other parts of something that you mightn't do more. Like if somebody likes a real breakdown of like say Rashford's card, you can kind of do that in the flow of a match. You can just say like, look, you know, Rashford's going to have ninety finishing. That's going to make him have a different animation, or he's going to have a one touch pass, or. Yeah, or as you did when you were calling out, oh, that's the orchestrator, that's the box. To yeah, box. yeah, yeah. Like, like that's perfect because yeah. it, it, it's informing people what the cards are doing, but it's just, it's not in an overpowered, yeah. or it's, you know, it's not it's not overly saturated. Yeah, you know, it's not you done in a like, to, this is yeah. like, this slot is, it's kind of like how we do the podcast though, man, as well. Like we're just naturally these type of people where we can talk about multiple topics and bring them back at the end and tie them all in together. Well, I, I think we can sometimes. I think we can. Sometimes, um, <laughs> most you still can't of the time. Close a podcast, but we, yeah, well, yeah, I can't. We, I can't ever close a podcast. I don't like no, saying that, bye but, to people, man. But that's a, but that's a, but that's a skill. A skill of being able to take one piece of information that was relevant five minutes ago and then dovetailing it back into the final product or the final analysis. Yeah, it's a skill even of itself because you're able to go, oh hey, do you remember that thing that happened two minutes ago? This is why it's really crucial. Or insert substitute happens here. This is why that's crucial because he's got super sub. He's got this type of thing whereas other cards don't mm. and that's where you can kind of make those moments matter because you it's 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 all about tying it all together and having a coherent telling a coherent story the way i look at my commentary is is i want it to be a case where you're not watching the stream but you can hear me you can yeah. see what's going on i want it to be if, if you were watching it of like... solely as a, as a radio host yeah. yeah 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 you could you could understand it you don't have to be glued to the tv every single second of the game to know what's going on yeah that's how i look at it because you know there are some people that just plug us into their ears yeah like these podcasts, yeah exactly yeah you yeah because we did we started out doing the podcast just audio where it was like yeah, nobody had like that's why i think we're so descriptive when we were given like you know if i'm trying to describe something i might give one two or three an analogies of like comparison that people can actually you know they're walking their dog and they're you know like out on a bike or well not a bike but they're out for a jog and they're listening to us and they're like oh yeah i actually get exactly what he means by by that you know especially if we're talking about cards and like it's something that me and you like have seen a lot of like recently and um you even see it from talking to the pro guys as well like over there like there's no doubt that the card the dream team style uh like of game like you know the actual dream team mode itself has been a success because mm -hmm. the cards like there's like constantly refreshing the entry point for newcomers to come in all the time so it's like once you kind of explain that to people and you're like you know well, why have we had 10 versions of mbappe and you explain that it's like well you know maybe some people don't your, didn't have your, 10 chances yeah, of getting him they only your, have had one your, yeah yeah your, your 10th version of Mbappe is somebody's first exactly of Mbappe. Yeah. yeah and i think once people realize that like they take on a whole different kind of meaning of what the dream team is and like what you're playing for and then obviously when eFootball 24 comes like that's kind of the that's kind of the way i would do it is that like when you have an analogy of that like it's 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 like that it's not pez anymore and it's like a different platform really and a different kind of like completely different game and franchise like yeah. that that is either for you or it's not for you and i think that kind of rel relates back into like analyzing gameplay and stuff as well there'll be some people that the type of gameplay is not for you and then there's other people that love this type of high level gameplay that you know as we as we've mentioned before there is a buzz to competitive 
e-football like or competitive pez back in the day there is a buzz to it because you're not just playing an anonymous person online over psn or xbox you're actually sitting literally five six feet away from somebody yeah you're watching you're watching us maccabee or eyeball barcelona yeah rito eyeball monaco <laughs> and, and uh, you know or, or for example you know the, the different vibe that you had when you could hear goals going in but you could hear in the vip section yeah of us, you could hear people celebrating goals going yeah in or or, or goals not going in, or things that were happening in the game that, that you could hear the anticipation that something was going to happen because you'd hear oh yeah, and you'd hear it and you'd hear it happen. Much like you know you see in regular football, somebody steals a ball and goes past the player. The the first chant you, or the first thing you hear is a go on around yeah, the yeah, ground, yeah. and then it all hushes because there's an anticipation that yeah. something then else is going to happen. And then if it doesn't happen, it's either an audible groan or yeah. it's a cheer that something's yeah. happened. It, it's that. It's like you said. It's that you know what you had in Poland is vastly different to what yeah. you experienced in Barcelona because you had something local. You had people that were in the venue invested in the actual game that was going on, whether yeah. it was for or against them, you know. And, yeah, and that and, was new, like, it was and, cool. And, you know, it was and, the thing, and the other thing I look at and the other thing I think there's a shame of is it's a shame that you didn't get to experience the season that I did was when it was 3v3. Combat. Yeah, man. That is a different beast entirely. I like, can imagine. <laughs> A pre-COVID, pre-COVID 3v3, Pez 2020 was off the charts. <laughs> I don't care what anybody wants to tell the me. The Wild Wild West. When you watch, when you watch Jose get out of his seat and he shushes a Schalke team after he's just gone one nil, after they've just gone one nil up, there is nothing like it. <laughs> I tell you now, nothing like it. Yeah, man. That yeah, but I think that that's something that they could definitely work on into the future because I still think no matter when you've dipped into eFootball or not. There is still plans, obviously, for future stuff. And it's like, yeah, it's been a long time coming. And obviously, it's probably not gone to plan as much as they would have liked. As in, oh, you know, mean, they obviously would obvious. like, yeah, they would have liked to have new, new modes out. I mean, look, as well and all as the cards are, and the cards have been a massive success, especially with newcomers, you still need to have the core experience like that will get you through the rough times when the new hottest game comes out and people are downloading that. Like if GTA was to release next month a lot of those free to play players that are playing e football or that would be interested in e football might download the latest fortnite update or might download gta online um you know because they're kind of like a more casual not saying that people that play free to play titles are more casual gamers like i don't really like the term casual they're, gamer they're, or... they're, they're more like the way to probably frame it is they are more likely to download a game and give it a try yeah yeah than... but like it's yeah. like like my girlfriend i would consider my girlfriend a gamer right but like she plays Animal Crossing and like, you know, a bit of Mario Kart. She doesn't play Red Dead Redemption. She doesn't play, you know what I mean? She's not playing Resident yeah, Evil. Yeah. Like she'll sit down and watch me play a couple of games she's like Last playing, of Us. She's not playing The Last of Us. Yeah. yeah, but she's still a gamer. You know what I mean? Just yeah, so, yeah. and I, 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 I don't like that term, that gatekeeping type of term where it's like, oh, you're not a real gamer. You never played, you know, the original Legend of Zelda <laughs> or whatever. It's like, yeah, but you I'm did, playing now. You didn't play. You didn't play Metal Gear Solid on the yeah. PlayStation One. Yeah. You don't know what it's you like. Didn't, you don't know what Pez. Like, there's some people genuinely, man. I still yeah. kind of. It's only hit me in the last couple of months. There is some people that when I'm live streaming or I'm doing a video, they'll say like, "What's what's edit mode? Like, what do you do in edit mode?" And I like yeah. it's. I thought it was people trolling, but it's people that genuinely have only ever played Pez on yeah. mobile that have come yeah. into eFootball on mobile and they've never I, heard of edit mode. I did, a, I did a spaces the other day with, I think it was Garner, Garner Esports mm. and some of the questions that were being raised because I'd only got in there to listen. Yeah. Um, cause I'm, good for, I'm good friends with um, uh, Boris who was uh, their representative in Bali. And some of the questions, most, I think, I want to say maybe 80, 90% of the, 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 the topics of the conversations were players who were playing on mobile and were talking yeah. about things that are happening on mobile. Very rarely was anybody talking about anything that was happening on console, but that it just kind of goes to show where the I suppose it's the access point. Yeah, the regions as well, isn't it? Different regions. Yeah, the the access points become different because obviously because they've now kind of amalgamated mobile and and console together in 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 a sense. They haven't yet unlocked the the forbidden door of crossplay with it yet, but the way that they've amalgamated the two mobile is now the easiest access point for anybody because yeah. everybody has i can't say everybody but the vast majority of people have a smartphone now yeah. that is able to run e-football yeah, on yeah, a mobile yeah. phone. and and you know the original 
genesis point of microtransactions came through mobile yeah it was your, your candy, candy crushes crush. of the world and, and and those types of games your farm bills those types of games where people will be like oh well you know what i'll stick you know i'll stick 20 quid into it or, or you know I'll, I'll play for my additional lollipops and my, my candies that <laughs> you know you know all of this kind of stuff you were a candy that's crush where, addict weren't you Come that's on, where yes. it, it, i lost i lost 18 months too um, no, 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 I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. But that's but that's the genesis point of where microtransaction came from. So the natural kind of progression of where it's going again now is that's you know that's where mo that's where mobile gaming is. So yeah. mobile gaming is microtransactions, and Konami are earning money hand over fist with microtransactions. As we've said already before, you know you're not going to start. You're not going to break off to create hot dog when you've got a hamburger store yeah. that's selling out. Like, yeah, it's just, it's not, yeah. I think it's, it's business of one hundred and one, isn't it? Get a product yeah. that people want and create that supply and demand. And if yeah. you don't want to engage in that, you have an alternative. You know, a GP alternative. But like, I, I I do think that's a perfect example of it. Is the mobile? Is that like, you know, I genuinely had to change my not a change but kind of adapt my perception of what pez meant to people and what e-football now meant to people as well because you know when i'm in my if i'm doing my you know a video or whatever and i'm mentioning castolo and menanda i'm taking it as gospel that people that are listening to my videos whether they watch now or they watch in six months time or a year's time or two years time they know who castolo is where there's some people that just don't know who castolo is yeah. they don't know what some, master league people, is they don't know Pez United. Say, some people people don't even people won't even some people won't even know because again to put it in perspective when you mentioned those names you're talking about games that are what do i want to say maybe two decades old yeah 20 years old nearly yeah you when they were in their pomp it, like you know you put it in reality there are people who are playing professional football right now who were born before uh, what before born after those games were released? Yeah, I know it's crazy, isn't it? You know what I mean, but there's a lad, the lad that's just debuted for Barcelona, who's 15. Yeah, <laughs> but he, yeah. he was he he was around or he was born in the year that the first Xbox 360 proper uh two PES 2008 came out. Yeah, that's crazy, man. That you know is I mean? scary. Like, so, I feel so, so when you yeah, so <clears throat> when you and you put it in that perspective, you are correct in a sense. Of, there are some people who are gonna have no idea about option files. Not have no idea about anything to do with that, and they're just gonna see what they see in front of them. Yeah, you know, there's people who are uh, who are, I would say, rightly complaining about the way that goals is about to go. Yeah, because goals is now animated sprites, and I know it's a completely different topic. This is what we do on the podcast. We go into vastly different realms. <laughs> but there's people who are complaining because the way that goals was perceived, it was going to be was, oh, this is going to be the competitor for eFootball yeah. and FIFA, and people are kind of going. It's just not that though, is it? No, football, I didn't. I knew it was never going to be like it's, that. It's but... football, and I wouldn't be surprised if UFL, although they'll have some good things about it, I'm not sure whether they're going to get off to a great start either. Yeah, you know, so it's you're kind of in this realm of going, well, you know, we're hanging on for these these games to come out, and goals has just kind of shot itself in the foot. Yeah, it's gone. Well, we're, we're Fortnite. It's essentially well, what it feels like is Fortnite football because of the way that they are, you know, they are um, they're advertising it at this yeah. point with the sprites. Well, the thing is, man, is like where, like, the, the thing I look at it, right, is, and you will know from your real life work as well, you know, and I'm the same, is like data, data drives pretty much everything. And it's yeah. like, where do you think these game companies, right? Even if you leave Konami out of it, like, where do you think UFL and goals and anyone that else is going to enter the market, right? Say 2K were to do a video game for football or soccer, right? Where do you think they're getting all these ideas that this is what people are actually wanting and supporting, yeah. right? Like they're not just pulling it out of the pulling it out of the, out of the grass and being like, do you know what? We'll make a microtransaction heavy game mode where there's going to be a rotation of you know packs every Monday and Thursday or every Friday and Tuesday, and we'll give them new cards. We will give them ten versions of Mbappe. Like they have to be seen to be like you know people are receiving what they're sending. You know what I mean? So if Konami yeah, are sending out funny. these packs and people are receiving them and opening them, right? I'm I'm the same. Like I wanted Rashford the other day, right? I wanted Rashford, the big time Rashford. I said I like, fifty yeah. spins. I got him on my second spin of a nine hundred pack, and it was like right, eighteen hundred coins. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like buzzing. Do you know what I mean? I was like, right now I can actually go and get Tommy Asu, right? And it was like that's a decision that I made as somebody that earns my own money that plays the game, right? I see Sep all the time. You know, like having pops of people being like, oh, you know, I can afford this. I can do this. It's part of my content. 
I'm kind of in a similar position like that. If somebody donates to the live stream a tenner and they're like, please spin for Pirlo, like you're spinning for Pirlo. So yeah. like it's, it's kind of the ecosystem of it is that like people that are watching you and are engaging with you, like they're not watching this podcast to hear us talking about gardening tips or, you know, like <laughs> cats yeah. and dogs. You know what I mean? Like what are we yeah, meant to yeah. talk about if the game at the moment is dream team right we can't talk about master league you can't do a podcast on master league when there's nothing there to to, to look at there's no right. screens Absolutely. to visualize so i think that that's kind of something that people have kind of slowly come around to that it's like you know like jesus maybe we're in the minority anymore maybe i'm in the minority maybe shales is in the minority shales is in the minority and i've spoken to, to, to him about this that like you know the, the, the day of sitting down playing a 10 season master league going into the shop, buying a game and then yeah. playing a 10 season Master League and editing it every year. They're, they're kind of gone now with the new gamer that's actually enjoying eFootball. You know, it's kind of gone every Monday and Thursday. What new packs? What's their max rating? Yeah, what can you yeah, train yeah, them up? Yeah, you know, yeah, so it's, yeah, it's, and there's no right or wrong yeah. about it. It's just, it's just adapt, adaptation. Like, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of like we mentioned like movies and stuff the whole time as an analogy for anyone that's like, you know, doesn't see us be animated and they're listening in, the, in their ears, just audio. It's kind of like any franchise. You look at Star Wars, you look at anything, right? You had what you had in the past and you'll have certain feelings about that. And then you have the new direction that they're going in. If you enjoy that new direction, brilliant. If you don't enjoy that, okay. But it doesn't diminish awesome. what came before it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and that's, yeah, that's you can still go back and play PES 6 and score bangers with Adriano if you want to, yeah, but yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's a difficult one. Yeah. Like, like people have made, you know, people have suggested to me before, like, going like, Oh, would you, you know, would you, would you consider going back and, 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 uh, you know, going back and playing the game, which I do, I still play the game. Like I, you know, I've had, I've had some really good fun with that little Monaco challenge that I just set myself. I'm not even really streaming that much. <laughs> yeah. If at all, uh, you know, um, you're just chilling with the game. Like, I'm just kind of just yeah. I'm just relaxed, you know. In a couple of weeks' time, I think it's it's mental health awareness week for the some runs. I'm probably going to do some type of uh, kind of stream around that. Um, but in terms of like actually wanting to stream, like the vibe for me is kind of like yeah, actually, do you know what? I first sit down with the boys every like every night for a couple of hours and just chill in a party and just you know. Uh, we'll all we'll all slew whatever game we're playing, but yeah. we'll stuff and doing it like I've had some fatal four way matches on WWE Two K Twenty Three. Some of the most fun I've had in <laughs> ages because because they've now fixed the online capability where you can actually now play against your friends. It's hilarious to do so, and it's just fun. Like you just sit down, and you you know you blast out a couple of matches, and you just have some fun. Like yeah. if, if 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 a game is gro- if a game is grinding you, like if FIFA is grinding you or eFootball is grinding you. You have pivots now. You, know, you can go and play Fortnite. You can go and play 2K23. You can go and play whatever else it is that you want, but you'll do it as like a group. You know, it's the same with yourself. You'll probably go and play Warzone with the guys, or you'll go and play... You know, yeah, we need to get you back into the game. Warzone, man. Yeah, the, yeah, the you, know, you know, I, I, I feel like I, I exiled myself. <laughs> I still do you just kind of got sick of it, didn't you, when they... I think I just got sick of, of ironically being called the main event for no apparent reason. <laughs> I, was just like, I was just like, yeah, I'm ironically called the main event because I get zero kills. I'm normally, <laughs> the, one, I'm normally the one that doesn't get us the dub. But the, the point is, is that gaming has moved in such a direction now where, or at least for me, where I don't really need, I don't really need to produce content anymore because, you know, for where I am in my life, it's like, I have the pod with you. I can go into a Twitch chat and have, you know, have the crack with, with people. But primarily, I'm a caster now. Like, yeah. I look at it and go, yeah, do you know what? I'm, I'm doing, you know, the eFootball Championship Pro, you know, great. I'm being brought back on board for that. I've done the Euros. I've done all of these different things. I did the ISF in, in December with Bali. Yeah, touch wood, you know, I'll be brought on to do Romania in, in August slash September. Like, I'm good. I'm good with where I am now. I'm comfortable. I'm happy. Like, that. that's, I, I suppose that's the vibe for me now. I'm happy where I am. So it's like, you know, I may appear on a podcast here and there, which is is my want to do. I'll definitely be on casting if and when. But, like, as a streamer, I'm kind of like, ah, do you know what? I'm good. I'm, yeah, I'm good. I'm happy. Yeah, but you've 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 like carved your own path, like that you're comfortable with, that you've that you're happy with, and I think that's the biggest thing is that like, you know, I wouldn't, I I I genuinely, and I've said this to you before, like, as like you know, 
Pez Universe and eFootball Universe as as a, like a you know as a platform, right? With Twitter and YouTube and whatever, right? I literally would just like stop it in the morning if I wasn't enjoying it. Like if I was yeah, like, absolutely. if I was like there on a Thursday morning when I when I get up and I'm like you know getting up to go to work and I'm like right I have four or four or five hours of work then I'm off to do a bit of streaming and then I'm going back to work. If I was like do you know what I'd actually I'd actually just rather just you know go out there and go for a run or I'd rather like watch a movie while I'm off and then go back to work in the nighttime or feck it I'd rather just continue work and have my Thursday evening off. If that ever came the case, like nothing would matter to me like i'd be so flippant with things that i'd be like do you know what like i did it before with the midnight kid on youtube i had like twenty thousand followers on youtube and i was like really enjoying my master league online my mlo and uh you know i just decided like i'm actually having more fun editing the game and that's where pez universe started to come from do you know what i mean so like i do i do think that yeah there you know there is there is there is certain cases of it where you have carved your own path, I think. And like, once you're happy with that, like you've kind of, you know, you, you've proven that like anything you've set your mind to, you can actually do. And it's just about now getting that happiness out of gaming and getting that happiness out of your hobby, because this is what it is. You know what I mean? We still have jobs. We still have mortgages. We still, you know, it's not like we're getting millions and millions and millions of views a month. You know what I mean? I think people, with the greatest respect to some of the people who are in my chat, like, or who have regularly been in my chat before, it's very hard to justify to your significant other <laughs> that you're going to sit down and I'll be honest, yeah. sit down for three hours and sit there and go, yeah, you're going to stream to 20 people. Like, yes, great. 20 people is fantastic, actually, in the grand scheme of things. There's 20 more people than some people have. Yeah, of course. See, I think my, the Mrs. Carrot was some crazy stat the other day where she was like, do you realise that like 93% of oh, something stupid, it's a ridiculously high number of people on Twitch actually stream to no people. Yeah. Like, it's a ridiculous number. Yeah. Like, and she was like, and you get people watching you. I was like, yeah, and do you know what? It's, it's great. But do you know what? The reality is, is that to siphon off three hours of time where I'm not spending time with the dog, I'm not spending time with the missus, I'm not spending time with the family, to, to, especially when I've already got out of it what I accidentally fell into. Yeah. Because I'll be honest, when I first started streaming, it wasn't a case where I went, do you know what, I want to be a commentator. Like, never, never crossed my mind at all. And it was only by accident <laughs> and by a fluke that I went, actually, this is actually pretty cool. I quite yeah. like this. Yeah, but when you started streaming, you, yeah, weren't, you weren't doing it as a means to an end. You were streaming because you were enjoying the interaction, the stream. And yeah, like, it's absolutely. the same with me at the moment. I'm on that journey now where I go in every Thursday and I'm like going live in 10 minutes. And it's like, you just see the chat like, oh, you know, yeah, what's the crack, Barry? You well. know, it's great. It's a buzz it's like, great. you know, so. But but the way I kind of look at these now is go, yeah, I'm, I'm content. I've kind of got in and got out what I really wanted out of it. Yeah. In a sense, because now I have a, a, a pretty decent role within the ecosphere of eFootball. So I'm kind of like, I'm good. I've, I've done, I've, I've, I suppose that in a, in a weird kind of way and in the, as a kind of a closer, I've kind of done the hard yards now. Yeah. I did the hard yards. I did all of the, the hard work that I needed to do. And now I'm kind of in a very good spot where it's like, well, actually, you know, I can take or leave streaming. I don't have to stream if I don't want to. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, and I've kind of got to that point. I said this to, to Claire the other day. I've kind of transitioned into what I always wanted to be, which was essentially a set piece streamer where if I'm going to stream, I'm going to stream for a reason. So yeah. if that becomes, I become a charity streamer or if I become something where I'm pulled in as like a very special thing, that's where I want it to kind of be. You know, if you wanted to pull me in and, and kind of go, oh, by the way, actually, we need a commentator for something. I want it to kind of be like, a, oh, wow, where's his... Where's yeah, we'll definitely this? be doing stuff like, like that, man. Definitely. And, and, that's, and that's kind of where I, I'm kind of sat now, where it's like, do you know what? If people want to pull me in to be part of their streams or if people want to do like show matches and stuff, sweet. Just let me know where and when I've got to be and, and I'll be there, you know, especially with community stuff. I don't charge any, I don't charge any money for community stuff because it's a community. It, yeah. This is what we're here for. You know, obviously if you're a production company and you're starting doing other stuff, that's a totally different question. <laughs> but like, but and you're speaking the, to Wes's agent, you know? Yeah. When you're speaking to Claire, she, 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 she's a lot. She's In-house a lot agency. Yeah. In-house agency is a lot different, but when it's a community thing, my stance has always been and will forever be. If the community want me to be a part of something, if somebody wants me to be a part of their community driven thing, by all means, I'm down to be there free of charge, no questions. Yeah, of because course. Not. The way I look at it is, is we all started at that point of the community to start out with. We were yeah. all there just kicking it where we were all trying to help each other out and do stuff. And that's still within me. 
So, you know, that's just an open call if anybody does want to come and say, you know where I am? Yeah, man. His card is there. We'll leave you, uh, flash up your little business card on the yeah, overlay. Yeah, just, yeah, just like we'll work for free. Just, we'll you're like, better call Saul, Saul Goodman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah, win, no but, fee. Yeah. But yeah, but no, yeah, you're right, man. It is like at the end of the day, man, like at the end of the day, it's, it's still, it's still a neat, you know what I mean? Like eFootball and Pez has been like, I think with, with the type of, if you are the type of person that you like doing content, once you get something, whether it's YouTube, whether it's streaming, whether it's going in and being a mod for somebody, whether it's being an admin on a forum, whether it's being a caster such as you, obviously you're in a different league when you're starting to do the casting and that because that's such a specialized role that like, you know, anyone can start streaming and whether people watch you or not, that's up to the audience, you know? But like yes. once you get something that scratches that content creation itch, whether it's editing an option file, casting, commentating, analysis, or doing YouTube or whatever, it's 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 kind of it then becomes a time of like well for me and i'm the same as you we're similar ages you know we have similar responsibilities like if somebody said to me look you could earn you know enough money to do this full time would you do it and people have like said that on twitch and streaming and whatever yeah like it's a different it's a different conversation then because your hobby is becoming your job kind of so it kind of yeah. like it, it becomes a pressure to do it um like you look at the likes of these guys on fifa like bates and them like you know their job is tied to the popularity of the game and the popularity of them as streamers they're in a different level but i do think that like when it's your hobby the conversation becomes how can i spend my time best you know yeah. and it's like me and you doing this podcast like is more for a catch-up with like people that watch us and having a chat with each other yeah, to, to do the content as a kind of a create a creative outlet do you know what i mean it's not like we're being paid 200 quid each to sit here and do the podcast <laughs> you know what i mean now if somebody yeah, in the well, chat with loads of money wants to do that we yeah that's, I mean, that's well, fine I mean, if you want to sponsor slot at the end of this <laughs> well, please let us know but um no, yeah man look i'll let you do the outro because that's your baby so i'll let you yeah, do the outro course. and uh it's been a good chat man it has it has and, and as a summary point at the end you know like i said if if you know if Barry is able, or if you know if you're able to get another opportunity to do something like that again, like I say, I think it'll be even better. Um, yeah, man, this has been a great. Fucking... It's been a. It's been a great catch up for the two of us. Hopefully, you know if you're not as long. Here at the end of, if you're here at the end of this video, thank you very much for indulging us. This has been a relatively self indulgent podcast. Yeah, um, <laughs> we are available on SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes. YouTube, obviously, of course, the video version that you're probably watching already. Uh, I have been Wes FC. He has been the Midnight Kid. We will see you guys next time and take care. Peace, peace, peace. peace.